My name is Joe Avila. Uh, not too far from where I live, there's a sign, and the sign's about this big, and it says, please do not drink and drive. And then there's a smaller sign underneath that reads, in honor of Amy Wall. Amy Wall was a young lady that I killed in 1992 while driving drunk on the freeway. Uh, an understanding end to my life of uh, drinking and addiction and unfortunately it took the 17 year old girl. Well after that I left the scene. I do not remember any part of that night and the uh, Fresno Police Department Highway Patrol uh, came and arrested me. I was taken to Fresno County Jail and booked for second degree murder and uh, there, uh, I was there for three or four days, and I was just looking for a way to uh, to kill myself. You know, I, uh, I I I was afraid. I was angry. I was sad. Uh, uh, you know, as God would have it, He put some people in my life who made me understand what reconciliation was and forgiveness was. A gentleman came to see me, uh, and um, his name was Les Slyle. He was a chaplain at Fresno County Jail, and my neighbor had sent him over to see me. Well, Chaplin came in and he says, why don't we just go somewhere quiet? So he actually took me to a small office and we sat there and we talked. We talked for, uh, for over an hour. And one thing that I remember that was really profound in my life, he said, Joe, Christ died on the cross even for what you did five days ago. And to me, that was just uh, extraordinary how somebody can tell me that my life was worth, worth saving. Well, at that moment, I, I made the decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, and uh, he gave me a Bible. In fact, I still have that Bible at home. It's a small Gideon's Bible, and uh, I kept that Bible for all these years. My mind uh, was changing, and actually my life was changing. I was beginning to uh, take responsibility for what I did. I was starting to think uh, of good things. And finally, I decided uh, probably three or four months into my stay at the Salvation Army, which is a six-month program, I decided to, uh, to make the decision to change my plea to guilty. I was tired of prolonging it. Uh, my lawyer and I were thinking that as long as we extended the time between the accident and, and, the, and the court, uh, that maybe there would be a deal that would be on the table, but there was no deal. But at the same time, I just wanted to change my plea and go on. And I didn't want to put Amy's family through the court proceedings and everything else. By the way, Amy is the girl that I killed. And um, so uh, shortly before Easter uh, of 1993, uh, we went back into the court, my wife and I and my family, and. Amy's family and friends, and, and I changed my plea to guilty. And the judge, I remember what the judge says, he says, Joe, you're an alcoholic, you're never gonna change, and you'll probably still be an alcoholic when you get out. But I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm sentencing you to maximum time in prison, which is 12 years. And uh, I just hope that you will change. And uh, three days later, I was taken to uh, Wasco State Prison for evaluation. I was at Wasco for about three to four weeks, and from there I was uh, sent to California Men's Colony in San Luis Obispo, California, where I spent the next seven and a half years. I ultimately secured a job there in, in the hospital. Uh, pretty high value job, if, you know, as far as prisons go, and a lot of trust there. And uh, I continued to uh, to go to the chapel, I continued to get involved with the chapel very heavily. I was able to go up to hospice and pray with prisoners who were, who were going home. And that really uh, was a uh, highlight of my time in prison. I was moved over to a minimum security prison and for my last year in prison. So I went over there and started working for the fire department there and, uh, and just get ready to go home. So the time came uh, in, uh, on January 6th, 1999. I was able to, uh, to be released from prison. Uh, my wife, my sisters, and some friends were there to pick me up. And um, 
from there we uh, we, we traveled home to, to Fresno and uh, Saturday came and uh, you know we were at home and said well you know we're gonna go to our first church service together uh, the next day so we you know we prayed about it and you know something about the church it's called New Hope Community Church uh, the pastor had been preparing the congregation for my return for for several months and he would even say you know Joe's gonna be here he's you know don't be afraid of him you know sit and talk to him and our church is surrounded by uh, trees oak trees and every one of those trees had a yellow ribbon around around it and then there was a big banner at the entrance of the church says welcome home Joe and I knew from that moment that that would be my home church and uh, I've been going there ever since. In fact, I've, uh, I've served on the Board of Elders for a while. Uh, I, I do a lot of things with the church. And uh, I, uh, my wife and I became Angel Tree coordinators for that church for a couple of years. And uh, I knew it was truly my church family. And, uh, next few days uh, went by and I got a call from my mentor. And uh, my mentor uh, told me that, hey, I just got off the phone with Derek Wall and, and, and Derek wants to meet with you. Well, you know, I had been praying for this moment for years for some kind of a reconciliation with, uh, with Amy's family. And so I said, well, you know, this is what we've been praying for. So let's go ahead and, uh, and schedule that. We talked for several hours. And Derek told me about who Amy was to him, how they used to do a lot of things together, how much he loved her, how he thought that I was a monster and I should get the electric chair. And he also said, you know, we have been following you for quite some time and we know what you're doing. I told him how I grew up an alcoholic, how I was a chronic alcoholic, I, how I used alcohol, abused it, used drugs, and ultimately what happened on the, on the freeway was because of all my bad decisions during my, during my life. And then I also told Derek, he says, you know what, I'm really sorry for what I've done and I hope that someday you can forgive me. A couple of weeks later, maybe a month later, I got another call from Ron and says, you know, I just got off the phone with, uh, with Rick Wall, Amy's dad, and he'd like to meet with you as well. I met with Rick, uh, and that was another long meeting. He talked about the two days a year where he goes to, sec to, goes to the cemetery to visit the grave of Amy, and one on her birthday and one on the day that I killed Amy. Rick Wall, uh, Amy's father, forgave me before I even asked him to forgive me. And he also said, Joe, uh, I know what you've been doing for a long time now, even when you were in prison, and I approve of it. Uh, when I met with Amy's mom, she requested that I watch a video of Amy's life the night before. That we watched the video, and it was, it was three hours of Amy's life from infancy all the way to maybe weeks before she died. And I really got to know Amy that night and uh, how precious she was and, and what a tragedy happened when I took her life. And the next day, it was really painful, but uh, I knew that uh, things like this aren't easy. You know, it, uh, you, you, you remember things that you probably don't want to remember the rest of your life, but then again, you know, if they could use for God's glory, then we'll go ahead and do it. And I think Derek and I uh, were asked to uh, to participate in a uh, restorative justice council. It was pretty big. There was a, a few hundred people there. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this uh, gentleman coming towards us, a pretty big gentleman wearing a red sweater, I believe. And I recognized him, and it was Rick Wall. It was Amy's father. And he came directly to me, and he grabbed me, and he hugged me, and he said, I love you, Joe. I killed his daughter, and he was able to give me a hug and say, I love you. And that is a true testament to the miracle of reconciliation and why Christ did die on the cross. Um, on January 6th of 2000, one year to the day after I was released from prison, I went to work for Prison Fellowship and became their area director. I'm now the regional director for Prison Fellowship for the Western United States, and I am celebrating my 17th year here at Prison Fellowship.
So that time in prison, I, I either could have just done the time or I could have just, I decided to live my life and continue to make my life better. I changed my life, you know. I, I did it for one reason, because I, I wanted to honor um, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and at the same time I wanted to honor Amy and her life. I wanted to make sure that her life was was worth something, you know, and and it was. And not only that, I just I just think that uh, you know, of all the good she she would have continued to do had she uh, had I not taken her life. So uh, that that weighed on me really heavy, uh, and and that's probably why I, you know I changed and I started helping people inside.